but society has changed a lot since he was invented in 1829. He still walks out unarmed, with whistle, notebook and truncheon tucked out of sight. But he walks in a violent world. And although he now has a powerful technology to back him up, he still works alone, wedged between the law and society's demands. Everyone recognises the British Bobby, but how many people know him? Liverpool is a typical industrial seaport city, and the Liverpool police are typical of a British big city police force. 2,300 police range an area of 50 square miles, attending to the demands of three quarters of a million people. And they've always given their police a tough time. For Liverpool was immensely rich, and men came here to get rich. But disappointment, poverty, and a long tradition of violence have turned the atmosphere sour. All crimes have increased. So have the number of public demonstrations. On this morning of the 12th of July, even the traditional orange parade of Irish Protestants must be policed with a wary eye. The man who holds the balance between the law and men's demands, in charge of Liverpool's 2,300 police, is Chief Constable Horton. Forty years in the service, his post is beyond any political interference. Well, traditionally, of course, the, uh, the police are non-political. And the last thing that I ever want to do is to get involved in a political situation. Because politics and police work don't really mix. I'm a firm believer in that. But unemployment, bad housing, no facilities for recreation, all these make police problems. Houses take time to build. They take a lot of money. Employment has got to be found. And, you know, we're in a, a difficult employment situation at this very moment. All this leaves young people wandering about with nothing really on their minds. And idle hands, in my experience, make mischief. So that um, politics do cause police problems. And we're the only people that uh, they can attack and uh, make it known that they are displeased with this political situation. In my annual report, I said something about the policeman being between the anvil and the hammer. Quite a dangerous position to be. Yeah. The police attitude is as though they're attacking the, the civilians. They want you to do something. If you're too quiet, they're going to annoy you. This is, they're going to provoke you or do something to you. Can I say in reply to that, Mr. Monfield, we have a complaints against the police procedure which is laid down by an act of parliament. Chief Inspector Wardale is the community relations officer. He's seen 24 years service with the police. His job is to stay in constant contact with the public. It's not his job to deal with official complaints. A procedure exists to do that. He wants to meet as many city residents as possible and hear their grievances. One of our members was uh, stopped by the police. The next thing you know, he was punched in the stomach. He got a tooth knocked out. Now, he was subsequently charged with disorderly behavior, in which he was found guilty. No we action against the police. police allowed these three white men to go away. No names, no attacks. Yes. Nothing was seventy one. He was charged with possession of cannabis. That was tried to the Crown Court. And the his case was dismissed. Directed as a has advised that there is insufficient evidence to justify criminal proceedings against any of the officers concerned. It's a much hackneyed word. I've used it before, and you might be tired of hearing it. But communication is the answer. I think you would agree to our problems. All kinds of people from all walks of life, all different colors, entertain prejudices about the other group. It goes from street to street in some neighborhoods. <coughs> One street dislikes the people in the next street. It happens in families. They distrust anyone outside their own family. You break this down by communicating. A number of people approach me and complain about the actions of certain police officers. Now, this obviously grieves me as it grieves the majority of my colleagues. Now we have a big problem. We have to recruit from the human race. And until we can find a better method of recruitment, we're going to have problems. 
I'm sure that many people suspect the motives of the police when they pursue this community relations policy. But this is no gimmick. This is a genuine attempt to communicate with the public and in doing so, enable the police officer to see the influence that he can wield in the community, the part that he can play in removing many of the difficulties which the community as a whole experience. I am the full-time community relations officer, but the most important community relations officer is, of course, the man on the beat. And we have about 2,000 men whose job it is to meet with the public daily. Constable Holmes leaves for work. He's 35 and he's done 11 years with the police. The way Constable Holmes does his job is crucial to relations between the police and the public. The idea is not just to project a good image, but to invite the public to come back at that, to enable the police officer to see what influence he can bring to the society in which he lives or operates. A lot has been spoken about the sort of environment or the sort of background that produces the kind of people we have to deal with. The social conditions which produce this kind of person obviously have to be eliminated. And we have a part to play in this. But we feel the major role is to be played by other people such as the social services, the government as a whole. For the moment, the police officer still has the criminal element to deal with. He still has to contain the present situation in order to preserve law and order and in order to protect the majority. I carry a piece of string safety pins and usually a clean white linen handkerchief. And the piece of string, somebody who told me, was to, if someone insisted on giving you the dog that they'd found, you had to lead the dog along on this piece of string. And when I'm actually out on the beat, carry a spare pencil because it's very often embarrassing to be halfway through a statement or something and you've broken your pencil. I always used to carry some smelling salts, but I never found a use for them. 182, calling and testing with Charlie Control, receiving you loud and clear. I've never drawn my baton. I've never been ordered to draw it, and I've never had to draw it. I pamper my feet, because they are my livelihood, really. And I insist on having comfortable footwear and warm footwear. Constable Holmes sets out to walk his beat. It's the toughest community in Liverpool, with soaring rates for violent crime and juvenile delinquency. Holmes knows the beat intimately. It's his, and no man-made hardware could do his job. He can spot strangers, he can make contact with kids. You being good? Hey. My main concern is to maintain a, a contact with people having a heyday today, aren't I? You're another one. Put that out of sight. Right. Charlie Control, Charlie X-ray. If somebody wants to pinch your purse, it's easy, isn't it? It's gone all shy. When a person gets to know a particular police officer, they do tend to look to that officer for guidance and help, but to actually go and chat to somebody and while they're chatting, say, oh, by the way, uh, Will you let me see your driving license? You know, they would look down upon you as saying, well, you're not a very nice policeman to know. <laughs> the neighbourhood would generally uh, go indoors when you walk down their street, which is the thing that mustn't happen, really, when the Bobby's walking about. He wants to see people as well as people wanting to see him. Is that your dinner? Hey? In 1971, over 2,000 children were cautioned for crime. That's an increase in a year of 64%. And offences of vandalism have increased by 28%. It's a terrible state out here, isn't it? Dreadful, isn't it? Mm. You're having a lot of trouble with these children. It's been like a bedlam with them. But uh, it's a lot quieter now. Yeah, they can't do much more damage now, can they? <laughs> Which week was it from? Well over half the crimes committed by Liverpool children are theft and burglary. 
What do you use to underneath the bed? Put in the thing. What did you put in the top? Matches and crystals. You put the back stick in the top yeah. so the money would drop down on the meter. How old are you? Eight. How old are you? Seven. Eleven. Once caught, the young offenders will be taken home and then dealt with by a specialised branch of the police force under Chief Inspector Wardale. At all costs, the Liverpool police want to keep children out of court and out of criminal records. A police juvenile liaison officer will step between the child and the prosecutor. And in consultation with parents, school teachers and social workers, the JLO will decide how best to deal with the child. Constable Taylor is a JLO. He works in the same division as Constable Holmes. Frequently, he'll go to the scene of a crime, for he too depends on close contact with the community he serves. But I'll take these boys down to the station now and see if I can get hold of their parents. Okay. Well, you three can come with me. Now listen to me very carefully. We're walking down. You see the length of my legs? Yeah. Twice as long as you. Don't try to run away. I'll soon catch you. Right, come along. Come. I'm thoroughly disgusted with your behaviour this morning. Not only have you been pinching from the shops, but you're truanting from school as well. And you, taking your little brother with you. Even worse, isn't it? Don't you feel ashamed? What on earth you wanted these things for, I don't honestly know. You know it's wrong to steal. At least you should do by now. You're old enough, aren't you? Even you, little fellow, take that smile off your face, please. Even you know it's wrong to steal, don't you? But no, you stay off school. You've got nothing better to do then but go round the shop. Hello, Taylor, juvenile liaison. Oh, thanks for phoning, Mrs. Evans, yes. I don't want to explain over the telephone. I'd much appreciate if you could get down here as soon as you possibly can. The boys are all right. Uh, possibly it is, Mrs. Evans, but I think you'll find this is rather important. Thank you, Mrs. Evans. The sleigh bees in the park. Yeah. You'd think a lot of them would go there, would you? Yeah. And sometimes they'll uh, obey you, but not always. No, no. No. Well, it's the same well, with us. I will say, of late, it's been a lot better, mm. quieter. Yes. Well, you're helping me, and I'm helping you, you see, mm. trying to do. Yeah. But more credit to the police, of course. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes, I think you're all very good and kind. Very we do good. what we can, when you we do. can. Yeah. And you look very nice in your uniform, excuse me, saying so. You look very nice. Chief Superintendent Stone is in charge of the largest national police training centre just outside Liverpool. There are eight others across Britain. Police recruits receive 13 weeks training here before they're sent back to their local forces. Stand past the intermediate classes, the remainder. Stand up! Please! Any policeman in any part of Britain will quote from the same law books, so the police provide a standardised education for all recruits. But they're concerned about the low educational standards of most of them, and are trying to devise more specialised training to prepare them for the changing world outside. I would like to think that we have, at any one time, a cross-section of society, from um, graduates to people who left school at the age of 15 or 16 with no academic qualifications at all. and we have to try to melt them together and achieve uh, a standard, which we do. I think they want security, they want a career with promotion prospects, and they also want to make a contribution to society. Okay. It's this last quality, I think, which is most important. 
because the constable, the constable in this country, is an individual. And he has the powers to arrest a person. And this is a power which should never be exercised without a great deal of thought and consideration. And uh, because of this, you know, the training throughout the 13 weeks here is based on this responsibility to the society of the constable. Every policeman must start at the bottom. Constable Bravin is 26. He's been with the police 13 months. He's one of the university graduates in the force. I have a Bachelor of Science in Botany and Zoology and uh, a PhD in, as a result of the three years research work. So officially Dr. Constable or Constable Doctor, whichever you prefer. Produce your appointments. It's a terrific responsibility. But you and with one little piece of wood that can soon be snatched off you, uh, you're not really very well equipped to deal with the situation. At times it's pretty terrifying. Parade, Sean. But having a gun wouldn't Miss really Smith. help an awful lot. If they had three guns to your one gun, then you still as badly armed. I'm sure if we had guns, everyone else would soon acquire guns and we'd end up somewhere along the lines of America. It can be dangerous, it can be dangerous if you're chasing someone. Perhaps it's foolish to go after them, perhaps we shouldn't bother, but instinctively you want to catch them if you can catch them. You'll break the arm, mate. It's part of a society that I've never seen. I feel better for having seen it. I'm sure there's no necessity at all for them to be like that. The squalor and the filth, which is totally unnecessary, um, I had never imagined that there were people like that. You lose your faith in the goodness of human nature. I was at school just up the road from, uh, oh, that would be about ten years ago now. And, uh, of course, all of it was built up then. None of it, none of these vast open spaces of dereliction, but they're all being grassed over now and uh, changing. Excuse me. Hey, is this your car? Yes, well, what's the number of it? It's, uh, um, I don't know, forgotten it, well, don't you? Well, what's all is this it yours? You? When was, when's your, uh, excise license expire? Next year, what's all this lot of you? Oh, never you mind what this lot is. Oh, it's expired next year, Let's anyway. Have a look at those keys. Look at you. And you say it's your car? Oh, it's just my car. But that's a set of bloody keys. Oh, well, well, I'm not satisfied with your explanation. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. But what you say may be put into writing and given in evidence. I hope so, I'm yes. arresting you for the attempted theft of this motor yes, oh, car, oh, 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 yes. and you're staying in that car till transport arrives. Have you got that? I'm trying to get out, no. No, you'll stay there. 179 to Alpha. It's my car, there. Go ahead, over. Yeah, Bill, could I have transport to Camden Street Car Park, one male attempted theft of motor vehicle? Over. What's your name, you old son? Yes, oh, we'll uh, you'll down get down to know that later. What is your name? You get, I told you, you get to know it later. And how long have you uh, had this vehicle then? Oh, I bought it last year. Did you indeed? Yeah. What do you do for a living? Never. Roger, thanks, Bill. You're a ref, and what do you sell then? Oh, ladies' things. Ladies' oh, things, yeah. I see, yes, yes. Well, it's a nice car to go with it, yes. Yes, sir. I've arrested this behaviour down the standstill. I've arrested this mount sergeant for the attempted theft of a marina motor vehicle. And at five past one I was in Fraser Street when I saw this man fumbling with car keys trying to get in the motor vehicle BLV645K. He got into the vehicle and attempted to start it and was having difficulty. I went up to him and asked him what was his vehicle, and he replied, yes. I asked him to give me the number of the vehicle, which he was unable to do. 
I asked him when the vehicle excise license expired and he was unable to give me the correct answer. I saw those keys in the ignition and I was then satisfied that this man was attempting to steal the vehicle. With the keys on? I cautioned him and told him that I was arresting him for the attempted theft of the vehicle and he said, you must be joking. We heard what the officer said. Uh, Anything to say about it? No. First, sir. Sarge, black car's registered to a Mrs. Wilkinson in Manchester. Although I live on top of the steep police station in the middle of this environment, I would hate to live here as a permanent resident. In fact, I wouldn't. The younger elements now that are responsible for most of the offences, it really isn't their fault. They've been brought up to do it by their parents. They just don't see it as wrong. They don't see any harm in stealing a car. The car is where they haven't got one, so they can remedy that by taking one. They really don't look upon it as an evil. We haven't really got time to go about the social aspects of altering their customs one way or the other. Um, we've just got to try and stop their customs from interfering with the customs of the more conservative members that are, in a sense, paying for us and uh, want us there. We've got to keep communicating with people. One confrontation between a police officer and a member of the public can destroy weeks, months of good community relations work. It's a slow process. There are people, of course, who would like to right the situation overnight, and I would too. But I know from experience that this is not the way life goes. It's a little more difficult than that. And I'm patient. As you get older, you learn more patience. Liverpool has always given its police a tough time. All crimes show an increase. Chief Inspector, Medic Control. Right. Yes, Mr. Gill. Uh, yes, that's quite so. The body of a young woman was found at 8.30 a.m. this morning in Rodney Street. We are treating it as a case of murder. Attacks on private individuals in the street have increased in a year by 9%. Attacks on cashiers inside their premises have increased by 85%. And in 93 offences, firearms were involved. Over five years, the incidence of robbery has gone up by 121%. The police feel hard-pressed. Public complaints and criticism can undermine morale. In an increasing number of demonstrations, the police themselves have become the target for the demonstrators' fury. They believe only good police work can prevent a breakdown in law and order. I just have your attention now. Now you've had a, a taste of what a hostile crowd can do. Fortunately, for the police close cordon, we manage successfully this time and unless we keep the methods that we have now the methods we're learning today and improve on them which i hope we will it's going to be a very very difficult job in the future as we anticipate these agitators these strikes rioters are going to go even worse but you must remember whether your helmet goes for a burton whether you get need in the groin you must still hang on to your close cordon Still keep your arms linked, and most of all, keep your temper. In 1971, 419 Liverpool policemen were attacked and wounded. In one year, that is an increase of 21%. In my annual report, I said something about the policeman being between the anvil and the hammer. And I think better sense will prevail eventually. And I can see that uh, the only way to do this positively is for this greater contact with people, telling them what you are doing and why you are doing it, giving them an interest in the achievement. I have a lot of faith in the police force. I have a lot of faith in policemen. 
We've got problems, of course we've got problems. But I'm optimistic about the future. That's my line. Step aside, babe. Let a star do this. That's all! That's all, folks!